Hello and welcome to Be Kind Connects. I'm your host, Shabnam Islam. And joining me today is the iconic, vivacious Chef Babette Davis. Now, most of you know Chef Babette as the creator and owner of Stuff I Eat Inglewood, but you have seen her all around the place. She is the co-host of Peeled. She has been on Rich Roll, on Tamron Hall. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And of course, she is my dear friend. Welcome to the show, Chef Babette Davis. Hey, thanks for having me. You know so, you got me. Though. I did not know you were interviewing me. You got me. She got me, you know, for those of you for those of you that for those of you that don't know, Chef Babette and I have a podcast called More BS that is airing on Vegan Cornhub and it's on YouTube and we hope that you get a chance to see that. But I'm really here to talk about you today. Because sometimes oh, we don't get a chance okay. to do that. Yeah. Yeah, really. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of people know your story, they know your journey, right? They've heard you on Rich Roll, they've they've seen these these dark places that you've come from and you are just such a bright light it's it's almost annoying how positive this woman is uh, <laughs> so my question to you is how do you really find that joy that energy every day oh such a good question and i'm so happy to share you know i have my moments just like every other human on this planet but I think what I have now at age 72 is the know-how to reel it in. You know, if, if I'm out there and I'm feeling beat up and I'm, I'm, I just know how to be like, but bet, come on, what's happening in your moment? Wait, are you in your now or are you in yesterday? Are you in 10 minutes ago? Which one? And I just, you know, I, I'd rather this big old giant smile than the tears that I can shed and have shed for so many years. So I just, I just force myself to um, stay present, stay current, if you will. And it, it, you know, it's working. I, I'm trying to share that with people. I remember my daughter said to me one time, she goes, but what if in your now you're being, why did she say you're being tortured? In your oh, that's trees. <laughs> yeah, that's trees. I said, but that's not my now. Uh -huh. You're talking uh -huh. about something, what if, is not real. So I, I can only address what is real, and this moment is real. So I've never been tortured. I may never be tortured. You're asking me to, what if? Well, no, not what if. You know, some people would argue that your past with, you know, dealing with drugs or abuse would be considered torture. Like that, that must have been, it must have not been the best experience. And yet you come at this world with so much positivity and so much brightness that you choose, you choose a life of happiness. And um, <laughs> how do you get people out of that? Like, how do you... How do you inspire others on the daily with that, that thought? You know, um, wow, you and these Christians, shall we? <laughs> um, you know, when I, when I was smoking crack, um, it was, a it was a really rough part of the human experience. However, I gained so much knowledge um, experience and I would never ever I would never ever do that to myself again um, I, I practice a lot of self love and self care that's, that's like number one on my list every single day what are you doing for self how are you loving you what are you ingesting what are you feeding your mind man I'm telling you when I was doing crack cocaine I never thought about any of that all I thought about was the first hit and then those hits after, afterwards. I wasn't in my right mind. I wasn't there. But once I got past that part of the experience, the journey, and came back to me, um, I'm glad I went through it. 
I'm so happy that I experienced it and was blessed enough to get past it. Now, I, I, that's why I say, Shaw, I've walked in so many different shoes. And if anybody needs any love from me because they're dealing with addiction, I can at least share my experience and my journey with them and how I got past it. So it becomes a good thing, right? <laughs> Anytime wow. you can help I mean, somebody. I, I love you. I think I think I, you you you've brought me out in some really dark times too. And you know, I think when you think when you think of people in the spotlight, you often don't think about the traumas or the the negative things that they feel that they experience in their space because it's particularly in time now like social media everybody's like oh this is my best foot forward I always have a happy a beautiful life but um you really do live that way and it is so inspiring um to just be a part of that I love you so oh, much well, thank you Todd thank you I'm glad to be where I am yeah. yeah, and I want to talk about your self-love and self-care because your self-love is obviously the way that you speak to yourself, the way you think about yourself, the way you think about your current now. But your self-care is the thing that everybody's like, oh, that's the magic pill. You know, they think they just want to take a chef a bit pill and all of a sudden, then, pow, they got these chef a bit arms. Not <laughs> people. Um, let's talk a little bit about your self-care routine. Well, you know, um, Self-care also includes um, your emotions. Um, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm just like everybody else. And sometimes um, I have to remind myself of who I am. I, I, you know, it's almost like I have to pitch myself and be like, are you really going to let this person tell you who you are? Or do you know who you are? And that's part of self-love and self-care because we can get so jacked up by the words of somebody outside of us, uh, uh, pointing a finger at us and telling us who we are. And we get, we get our feelings hurt. I, I go through that a lot with a, a, a loved one, a person in my family. They're constantly, well, I go through it a lot and I'm constantly reminding myself, I may, I initially shed a tear, Sean. And then I have to have that conversation with Babette. Girl, come on, do you know who you are? Is that you? No, it's not me. Well, then what, what are you tripping about? Right. Come back, come back. That's part of my self-care. My self-love starts with getting enough rest, letting you beat up on me. <laughs> For those of and, you that don't know, I train Chef Babette, but, yes. you know. And and now you get to keep on training me. Oh, no, you, right. you're leaving me. Yes, anyway, yes. but <laughs> but ingesting, um, ingesting. Now, listen, I'm not running 100%. I don't want anybody to misconstrue. I'm not, I'm not talking about perfection here, okay? I am not. I am part of the human species. Every single moment is a learning experience. Um, but I do know that there are certain things that I don't need to put in my mouth. And because I did it years ago and had eczema, asthma, I had, um, I was, I, I couldn't digest my food. I was a hot mess when it kept belching. Oh, baby. I don't even belch that much anymore. But so, I mean, you know, just learning how to nourish myself um, and then staying physically active, um, especially for people your age, uh, you, you're strong right now. And sometimes we get to feeling like we don't really have to do anything. You got to keep up with it. You have to keep up with it. Um, and especially for people my age, man, you better be on some moving because it is very, very easy you know me, and because and, my husband was a stretcher. I mean, while Rhonda was down on the floor stretching, putting his feet behind his neck and all that kind of stuff, I was over in the bed looking at him going, that looks like a good stretch. And so now you be <laughs> a trainer, you know what you have, you go through with me because I'm tight, because I did not stretch. That is a mistake, y'all. Don't do it. So when it, when it comes to taking care of yourself, embracing yourself, 
it's all of it. Not, yeah. don't, it's all of it. Um, because I, I do have the challenges with being uh, a bit more dipped than I would care to be at 72 years old. So that is why now I'm like, okay, shop, let's do this. Um, but man, people your age, don't stop, move, stretch, bend, whatever, the, get it in a yoga class, Bikram, whatever you got to do, but move that body. You know, I love that you say that at your age, at 72, you feel stiff, you know, because I think there are a lot of people in their 20s and 30s that equally now feel stiff because they are in a seated job or constantly stressed. But I'm sure there are plenty of people that are your age that are like, damn, all she's dealing with is stiffness. (laughs) And I think that's another part of self-care because you are the epitome of someone who changed their life at 40. You went vegan, yeah. started exercising, mm-hmm. and for the last 32 right. years, you've been consistent with that. Yes, 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 I have. However, I would like to share with those listening that when I when I take a break, and I'm, say for instance, I, I'm, I'm not moving. I'm not moving this next two weeks. I ain't moving. I feel worse than I do when I get up and I go ahead and make my body move every day. I really do feel worse. I don't, I have gotten up before during the, uh, after a break, if you will. And I, I'm walking with that elderly kind of, I, I get out of the bed and I, I'm kind of, and I say to myself, walk, walk. What are you doing? What's that, that little toddle? And I make myself I swear to you, I am not lying. I have gotten out the bed before and been like, and then some said, what are you doing? What do you want from me? It's called a toddle, apparently. That's the... (laughs) But I think the power of mind over matter is such a fascinating thing. You know, yes. because we, we often tell ourselves, oh, I don't want to get up. Or I don't. Yes. Oh, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, but you know what? Imagine if you did, you know? Yes. Imagine if you did. Chop, that's so funny. But it's true. You think that was true. I love you. All right, but you know, listen, we spent a lot of time together. So it's so funny to like literally live right down the street. And I'm like, hey, I got to interview you for Zoom. And she didn't even realize that I'm interviewing her because you could have done this in my house. I thought we were doing some stuff together. You know, we always doing stuff. So yeah. I, I left uh, work the- going, I got to get home. I got a Zoom call. Uh, this is great. But what I do want to talk about is Stuff I Eat Inglewood, because I think what Stuff I Eat Inglewood is more than just health food or soul food, vegan soul food. It is soul food for the community. It is. Yeah. It is, uh, you guys should have a historical landmark in, in <laughs> Inglewood is what I think should be happening. But um, what has been your greatest experience with Stuff I Eat Inglewood and the creation of that? You know, when we first people were asking us, you taking vegan food to Inglewood? Are you sure you want to do that? And I was thinking to myself, well, Ruth and I are vegan, and whenever we want to go eat something, we have to travel across town. We have an opportunity to get this brick and mortar um, right here in Inglewood on Market Street, five minutes away from my house. I would not do that. And uh, I'm just thrilled about the success. Uh, Even though we went through COVID, yeah, things got tight. Um, But for a couple that was already older when we decided to do this, we had no experience with business, but we knew we needed to bring a better product to the community so that people like us didn't have to travel across town to get good organic, clean, real vegan food. I don't mean to be mean when I say that, but I'm no, doing you're not all being the mean. Thing. Yeah, like I'm doing all the thing. I know what I'm the, cooking. That's another thing that we're going to talk about in a moment in terms of why I think your health is your health. Because um, first, let me just say, th- these 
these nut burgers you got are like out of this world. The nut uh, burgers are the lid. Uh, they're out of this world. And you really probably think you're actually eating like a meat substitute, like impossible ground or something. But it is, it's made from walnuts, walnuts. and mushrooms. And this woman is genius. So you're right. No, but, when you but, say, but I, may I just really share right quick where that kind of came from? Um, there Please. was a re there was a recipe. Uh, I think it's Manhattan Beach, or I think it was Manhattan Beach, maybe Redondo, called the Spot. And the woman that ran the Spot, they're closed now. They had a rough time during COVID. Things went wacko for them. But the woman that ran that restaurant was a doll and. When Ron and I was just doing the cart over at Agape Spiritual Center, we needed to get some products at a discount. Now I went to people in the neighborhood that I knew personally, they weren't trying to help. I went all the, I used to eat at her restaurant and I asked her, could you order me la da da da, any time you need it. And she had a loaf, a nut loaf. And it was in her recipe book, the Spot recipe book. And I latched on to that nut loaf. Now, my nut burgers have changed since then, but that's truly the credit. I'd like to give the credit to Tanya from the Spot because that's where the original nut loaf came from. And then I turned it into burgers. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share that. Thanks for giving me that moment. I love that because I don't think that's a story I've heard you share anywhere yet. No. And I have you not. know how much we love those nut burgers in this house. <laughs> oh, they're wonderful. Now, the nut burger has changed, but the original idea of using walnuts to make a, nut, a loaf and all that came from Tanya and her book. And then, of course, my nut burger is Bip Bam, thank you, ma'am, honey. It, it's quick, fast, easy, and very few products. I'm so proud of that. Because too many times when we're eating all of this manufactured food, it's got a lot more chemicals in it than the human species, species actually needs to ingest. And I, I, that's why we make our food the way we make it. I can count the ingredients on one hand generally. And, and I think it needs to be that way. I know we feel better and I'm extremely healthy. Ron's healthy. You know, it's, it's worked for us. So aside from stuff I eat, I'd like people to understand what your, what your daily regimen is like, because I think, um, when you look at someone who's vivacious in their seventh decade, that has the body of a 20 year old and has the energy of a 20 year old, um, you're wondering, well, is it just the food? No, there's more to the lifestyle than you think. I mean, this woman gets up early, goes to bed early. So actually walk us through your day from morning to close. Okay, I generally awaken automatically. It's a bathroom run normally. Um, <laughs> at a real what? Between 1.30 and 2. Now, um, I'm, I'm, Dealing with some carpal tunnel challenges um, right now. I don't want to claim it as I had my carpal tunnel because it ain't mine. It's an invader, an imposter. <laughs> so anyway, if I have overworked the day before, um, sometimes the hands um, interrupt my rest. Um, but um, normally it's between 1.30 and 2. I get up. And if I have to be the work around 3.30 or 4, I'm up. And uh, so I get myself together, go into stuff I eat, and um, I do, I prep all of the food there. Um, then, if I'm lucky enough for it to be a day that I'm going to work out, I head over to Shab's gym, and which is in the marina, and um, I get my workout on. After then... <laughs> I'm kind of free. I mean, I have Zoom calls. I have business that I take care of. But for the most part, 
I don't do a lot. I don't want to be driving all over the place. LA is a hot mess when it comes to driving. So I get those things that are important to me, important to my lifestyle out of the way. And then I can come home and chill and just be with Babette. I'm, this is, I'm just loving spending time with myself. This is like the first time in my life that I've ever been able to do that. I mean, doing it solo. Um, Ron and I are married, but I mean, we're in our seventies. We figured this thing out. He got an apartment over there at the restaurant. I got my apartment over here and we still husband and wife, but I can be by myself and ain't got to be bothered if I don't want to. You know, so what I'm hearing here is you rise before the sun, you rise before the sun does. Oh yeah, go to sleep. You have to go to sleep and go down. Right? So you're on this really great circadian rhythm. You are active every day, even in your job. You're eating plant-based foods and you live a life with less stress. And sometimes that means living away from other people. Right? Because your focus yeah. is you and your health and your stress. So yes. if you guys are looking for the magic pill, she's just giving you the concoction. You know, you just got to build it yourself and your lifestyle. And I guarantee it's going to happen. But you take these variables of happiness and, and time for yourself and activity and love. And, and, it, it and really the fact that I, I feel so good. And, I, and at, at 72, I don't, I don't even have a primary care physician. It's like, I'm feeling amazing and it's my lifestyle. So why wouldn't I share that? You know, it's not being, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, this is working, you guys. I, I'm feeling amazing. I, and, and so, yeah, that's why I share and that's why I continue to do what I do. It's working. You know? And let's talk about how it's working because you've, you've done a lot of projects, right? I want to talk about the things you've done. You, we, we met on the set of Peeled uh, in yeah. 2022. And so that was an amazing project. How, how did you get involved with, with Be Kind and Peeled? Well, Be Kind got in touch with me. They actually reached out to me. And um, I was so thrilled and so excited. It's like, you guys know who I am? And uh, yeah, and, and and then when when we got together and we got all our scripts and all that kind of stuff, and I was able to meet everybody, I just fell in love with the whole team. And they've always treated me like they've known me forever. They they they're re- be kind, man. They're really some good folks. They took care of us. You know, they took they were, care I, of I, us they on did. that set. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They're, they're good it people. Was, we love Star. We love Gia. Yeah. They just really Star good Star and Gia, really. They're just, I, and, and for them, yeah. you know, I, I like, they're so um, daring. You know yeah. what I mean? I like the fact that they were just like, no, we got to do this. And they, they didn't know what it was, what it was going to do. It was like, we doing this right here. I love, I love them. I love their energy. And, and they got a lot of stuff. They got a lot of stuff they're going to do and do it. But what other projects you have going on? I know that there was Heart and Soul of the Champion with Dr. Baxter oh, Montgomery. Oh, that's still really major. Do- if nobody knows who Dr. Baxter Montgomery is, please Google, uh, uh, um, what's his wellness center? Montgomery. Montgomery. Montgomery Wellness. Um, but his name is Baxter Montgomery, and he has just created a, a docu-series called The Heart and Soul of the Champion. And the first episodes include a bunch of, um, uh, uh, what do you call, athletes. I mean, these are big time athletes that now their health is not what it used to be. And some of them with clogged arteries of the blood pressures off. And what he does is he's filming their uh, uh, um, uh, journey with him as he heals them with raw food diet um, and activity. And the, it, it, the, that is the medication, uh, live food and movement more than anything. He's not into a whole bunch of drugs. He uses what he needs to use to get them healthy. And then after that, and you see all of this in the series. So it's really, Sean, you were there. Yeah, 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 it was really powerful. Yeah. 
We yeah. were there in Houston, Texas for their for their live event gala, and it right. was just really right. um, Houston. You could, yeah. And we met the patients. You know, the patients were there as part right. of Daryl the gala. Green was. Remember that's that Daryl Green was one. Uh, that was such a fast runner. <laughs> and then he was that kid's number three hundred pound vegan. With David Carter wasn't he? David he Carter. was there, and then we had John Sally there. So John you Sally. Had, You've done a lot of things with a lot of people. And then you also have projects with our dear friend, Tara Bennett-Smith, right? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Tara, Tara's a manager, my manager. And Tara and uh, Tara has a, a series called the Right Turn Series. And she gave me a role in that series, playing myself. However, this ship, the bed is not married. She's just a jazzy, older lady, a businesswoman. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, private, she does private shipping. Anyway, yeah, I'm so really excited chef about of that alter city. ego. There you go. It's that other ship. <laughs> I, 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 is is there anything else that you have coming up this year that we should be excited about? Well, you know, we're doing the girlfriend getaway again. That's in October. Um, what? Are, where are we going this weekend? This weekend, we're going to the Vegan Health and Fitness Expo in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. But have you been hearing about the weather? Oh, the weather is nuts. And y'all, you know what changes the weather like that? Climate Us. change. Yeah. That's it. So you know what the no. you know the biggest contributor to climate change is? Here we go. Animal go ahead, agriculture. Tell them. Animal yes, agriculture. And so this is what I kind of want to get into with you because oftentimes when you talk to people, you're you you're really talking about the health aspect of things. You know, like you you like treating your body like a temple. But you really don't often talk about, you know, animal agriculture, animal abuse. So I'd really kind of like to hear your perspective on that side of veganism that we often don't hear from you. I just um, believe that um, humans, um, we've, uh, first of all, due to ignorance, we have become very, very um, selfish. And um, we don't really... Since we don't really know how to care for self, we don't care for anything outside of self. Um, you have to love you before you can really love anyone else. The planet is our home for right now. And um, there's a certain way that we were supposed to take care of that planet. It's like, and this is not to bash, I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, bashing anybody because they're overweight. But I saw a young girl crossing the street yesterday as I was driving my car and she looked like she might have been my granddaughter's age, early 20s. She was so huge. Her legs, her ankles, her feet, everything was just swollen. Just swollen. Now, if we care for us like that how do you think we're going to care for other species on the planet or the planet itself and that is what we're experiencing now a lack of care for anything um humans have done this we have made this mess and we continue to make the mess and the number of people eating animal flesh is not diminishing it's rising. Even though we have a lot of people that are, are not eating it anymore, we're still, and, and we can't, we, we cannot continue to feed the number of people that are on the planet today the way that we've been trying to feed them. It's not sustainable. And so our weather is suffering. I mean, we're having weather events. Come on, I've been on this planet in this form for 72 years. I've never heard of so many storms just storm after storm after storm and i don't even recognize la right now where yeah. is the sun isn't 90 some odd degrees in vegas and it looks like it's getting ready to rain again today okay. so this is us we've done this and um and it and, and like i said the connection self-love self-care includes the whole you can't separate yourself from the planet you know so it's like all of this matters. All of this makes sense. Taking care of you and taking care of all of it is what we should have done. 
I don't like to think of things being too late, but I just don't know how life is going to be for my two-year-old grand, great-grandbaby um, in 15, 20 years. You know, well, we already surpassed the 1.5 degrees Celsius um, yes, degree right. change. And that yes. was like the, the, the red zone, right? Like the Nova that was the zone. zone. Right. Yeah. And so there are... And they're saying by 2030, by 2030 is, yeah. But we're already there. And yeah, and then then we're on to like a two degree change. And then you start to think about how that boils our oceans and how it truly impacts our, what you, what some people call our food systems. But for us, it's an ecological system, right? Like we know we can't live without bees. Imagine what it would be like to live without fish, to live without... CV. Well, they say once the ocean goes, we go. We need the ocean, but we've got it's full of plastic, and everything is plastic. I don't know. We have made some people in LA. Yeah. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> no. Um, well, I think what I I think what our our listeners really want to know is that what would you like your defining legacy to be? Well, defining legacy. Well, um, someone on this planet that wasn't just on the tape. Someone that truly loved the human experience. Someone that shared her life um, in a positive way, in a healing way, in a loving way. Um, that's that's what I want people to remember me for I the change that I would love to make I have to do by myself I can't in other words if I have the knowledge of what's the best way for me to behave in my now if I have that knowledge then I need to take action and I want to, I, I, that, that, that's what I have to do. I have to do it for you, Shab. I have to do it for my great grandbaby. I just have to do it for the future of our planet. No matter what people are telling me, oh, it's too late. It does not matter. My, op my obligation is to take care of the whole. So can I just do that? Can I just do that? And I think you do that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chef Babette Davis, owner of Stuff I Eat Inglewood, taking care of the community with her food, taking care of the world with her words, and taking care of her family and friends with her hugs. Thank you, oh, Babette, for being here today. Love you, Shelby Bobby. And right. for you guys who do not know how to find her, you can find her at Chef Babette on Instagram. She's also got TikTok. You know, get spicy over there. And then, of course, Stuff I Eat Inglewood. Make sure you give her a shout out. Um, and no. where can they find you at Stuff I Eat? Here we go. Stuff I Stuff Eat. I, Stuff I Stuff Eat. I eat. They don't want me try to Stuff I Eat. 114 North Park Street. In Eaglewood, California. 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 Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody, for watching this episode. Go to www.thekindconnects.com, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,